Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to section 2.3, Rate of Change and Slope. We are going to kick things off with a vocab word, rate of change. Rate of change is a ratio that compares how much of one quantity changes to another quantity. We also know rate of change as the dependent variable over the independent variable, such as the y is the dependent variable, and it's over the independent variable, x. So what do some of these problems look like? Well, here in number one, we have students that applied in 2004 to UCLA, and then in 2006, this amount of students applied to UCLA. We are asked to find the rate of change in the number of students applying for admission from 2004 to 2006. Well, the very first thing we have to do is define our dependent and independent variables. And how we define our dependent variables, what depends on the other? Well, I know that students depend on the other because the students changes for the year. Because the students change from year to year, I know that my students, which is my dependent variable, depends on the years. Well, now that we have that, I know that I'm going to put students over years. So let's go ahead and figure out this problem. Well, I also know that this 56,000 students belongs to 2004 as they make a great circle around it. And this 60,000 corresponds with this 2006. So let's get things started with finding our rate of change. Well, we have our students that we're going to subtract on top. So it's 56,878 minus 60,291. Now you could have went in any order with those, but as long as you stay with the same variables from first to last, we'll be fine, or first to second, we'll be fine. So. Since 56,000 corresponds with 2004, I'm going to put the year 2004 first, and then we're going to subtract that with 2006. This should be a 0, 2006. Now, we subtract, and we get a negative 3, 4, 1, 3 on top, and a negative 2 on the bottom. Remember, two negatives make a positive, and they turn out to be 1,000. 706.5. Well, what is this 1,706.5? It is the number of students that apply to UCLA per year. So that is our rate of change. Let's try another one. Now, number two, we're asked to refer to the graph about the fastest growing restaurant change in the U.S. during the time frame 2001 to 2006 and we're asked to find the rate of change from 2001 to 2006. So again, the very first thing we have to do is find our dependent variable and independent variable. Well, the dependent variable, what depends on what? Well, the number of stores depends on the number of years. So our dependent variable is stores and our independent variable is years. Now, just a little hint. Our dependent variable is usually our y, and that's usually on the side of the graph, while our independent variable is always, or usually, in the x position, in the x part of the graph. So now, before we actually hop into our fraction part, we have to pick two points. You can pick any point on this graph, but I'm going to pick our starting point, which is 2001. And I'm going to say that corresponds with 6,000. Now be careful here because that corresponds or it's on the side of the graph where stores is in thousands. So it's not 6, it's actually 6,000. And I'm going to use this very last point and it's year 2006. So 2006 and it corresponds with, I'm going to say 34,000. So now we can set up the fraction part of the problem, so it's 34,000 minus 6,000, 
Now you could have went ahead and put 6,000 minus 34,000. You would just have to use this point first. But since I put 34,000 first, I have to use this point. So I'm going to say 2,006 minus 2,001. And that gives me 28,000 over 5. And now you punch that into your calculator to find out that it is... 5,600 stores, and what did you have on the bottom? It is stores per year, or just one year. Let's try another one now with a table. So now we have a table that shows us the rate of change, or that we're asked to find the rate of change of a solution. Now, how do we use this as a table? Well, we have to figure out what our independent and dependent variables are. Well, usually when you're talking about a time frame, that's going to be your independent variable. And your dependent variable is going to be your temperature because your temperature is going to depend on how much time, how much time, and in this example, how much time it has been removed from the heat source. So how do we set up such a problem? Well, before we had a point, so I'm going to use this as a point. I'm going to use this guy as a point. So I'm going to say that's 0 and 143 and 6 tenths. So there's one point. And I'm going to use the very last point. Again, you do not have to use a first and last point. You can use the two middle points. You can use the first and the second last point. But I'm just going to use the first and the last point. So it's 12 and 118. Four tenths. So now my y's, my y's are going to go on top of the fraction. So I have 143.6 minus 118.4, and that's going to go over 0 minus 12. Notice again how I started with this point and I went back on the bottom, I went back to this point. So now we punch that into our calculator. We find out that it's 25.2 on top over negative 12. Again, punching it into our calculator, we find out that it's negative 2.1. And what is negative 2.1? It is negative 2.1 degrees, degrees per minute. And now why is it negative? Look at our temperature. Is our temperature going up or is it going down? All right? As time goes on, our temperature is going down. So that is why we have a negative rate of change. Now, rate of change leads us into slope. And slope of a line is the ratio of the change in the y coordinates to the corresponding change in the x coordinates. And now if the line passes through our coordinate point x sub 1 and y sub 1 and x sub 2, y sub 2, right? All this one here is and that one and that two and that two are. All it is is just notation. This could just be an x and a y and this could be an a and a b. It's just a different way to represent points. And now slope is the change in y over the change in x or we may have seen it y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Let's try a couple problems. And four and five. What's my hint? Well, change in y over change in x's. Now in four, what is my y? Well, here's my y and here's my y. What is my x? There's my x and there's my x. So make sure you are using your y's and x. So I'm going to start with this point. So if I start with my y and this point, I have to use my x. So let's go ahead and try it. We have 3 minus my other y is 5. So since I started with this point, I have to go back to my x first. So it's negative 4 minus 2. We simplify to get a negative 2 on the top over a negative 6 on the bottom. Even more, negative over negative turns into 1 third, turns into a positive 1 third. Right? I like to label my x's and y's just so I know what I'm subtracting. So make sure we are subtracting our y's on top. So it's going to be 4 minus a negative 2 over 
a negative 1 because I started with my y from this point, so I have to start with my x from that point, minus 1. And so that gives me a minus, a negative turns into a positive, so it's 6 over a negative 2, and that simplifies to a negative 3. Now we are asked to find the slope of a line that we already have on the graph. Well, when we have something like this, there's a couple different ways that we can go about this. The first way is to find points on the line. So here, I'm going to say that I have point, or I have this point right here, which is point negative 3, negative 2, and I also have this point on the line, 1, 0 right here. Well, once you figure out what points the line passes through, you can just use your slope formula. So we go ahead and plug our y's and x's into it. So we have negative 2 minus 0 over negative 3 minus 1, which turns into a negative 2 over negative 4, which is the same as 1 half because negative divided by negative is a positive. Notice how it is going up from left to right with a positive slope. It is going up from left to right. So as you read, it will go up. Now, another way that we could handle a problem like this is to, again, find some points that it goes through. So I'm going to say it goes through that coordinate point right there, and it also goes through this coordinate point, is that we can count. We can count. Well, first thing we count is up and down. So we go, how many do we have to go down? We go down one, two, three. So we went down three. We went down three, and we went to the right one. And now since we are going down from left to right, I know that it is, has to be a negative slope. We went down three, which is my y, over my x's one, and we can simplify this to be negative three. Or if you wanted to, you didn't like just counting, you can also just label like we did here. This point was zero, two, and this point was one, negative one. Plug them into the formula and you're off to the races. Now let's try a couple more examples. Now we're asked uh, to find the value of r so that the line passing through each point has the given slope. Well, the very first thing that we have to do is to find the slope of these two points. Well, how do we do that? Remember, this is x, y, x, y. So let's plug them into our formula. We go 3 minus 7 over 6 minus r, and that's going to equal what? That's going to equal our slope, right? So now we simplify. We have negative 4 over 6 minus r, which is equal to negative 2 fifths. Now be very careful guys when we multiply it, and I'm going to write this out, because now it's negative 2, 6 minus r, and that equals, guys, it equals, when we cross multiply, we have to make sure it equals negative 4 times 5, which is negative 20. Distribute that negative 2, so it's negative 12 plus 2r. That equals negative 20. Simplifying I'm going to come up here with it. It is 2r equals negative 8. And then we figure out that r is negative 4 by dividing by 2. And our very last problem here is number 7. We're asked to determine the rate of change for this equation. Well, when we're asked something like this, let's get y by itself. Let's just start solving for y. So I'm going to solve by, for y by subtracting 5 from each side. So I get 12x minus 4y equals 13. Solving for y, so I'm going to subtract x over to the other side. I'm going to subtract everything that is attached to x. So it's negative 4x equals negative 12x plus 13. How do I get y by itself? I have to divide by a negative 4. So when you divide by negative 4, you have to divide everything on the other side by negative 4. So now y equals a positive 3x minus 13 over 4. And now my rate of change is anything that is attached to this x. Anything being multiplied or divided to that x. And so here it is 3. So my 
rate of change is 3. And that does it for section 2.3, rate of change and slope. Good day.